There seems to be trouble in paradise, within the manosphere, I mean. Controversy is never too far off whenever you attempt to deliver content that is intended to deliver the unredacted truth. But this particular controversy is more of a principal disagreement rather than an ideological one. Particularly, women who are prominent within male spaces. And this is an ongoing discussion within these spaces. Do women belong in the manosphere? Now, in recent times, there have been women that have found immense success within these male-dominated spaces. And when these women amass their success, they attract the attention of what they would often label as haters. You'll have content creators like Just Pearly Things or Melanie King, among others, who come under severe criticism from men and women. And often the criticism is relegated to hating. I mean, if you're advocating on the behalf of men, why would men be the ones criticizing? Are they attempting to work against their own benefit? Not really, but I have a pretty good idea why some of the women within men's spaces are being criticized. And though many of these women perceive the criticism as undeserving, ironically, it is that perspective that is the reason men have said women shouldn't be in the manosphere. Because at the end of the day, no matter how well-meaning, when it comes to personal interest, it is difficult for a woman not to think and reason like a woman would. Now, I've made some content featuring some clips from just pearly things. In fact, the first video that I made featuring Pearl was one where I had to essentially school her on her misconception as to why black men in particular followed her content, which I understood was no different than why most men followed her, but she was under the impression that they were attracted to the idea that she came from a two-parent household, which makes no sense to me, but then again, I'm viewing it from my many years of experience as opposed to Pearl, who is still in her 20s. But she's had some good moments on her show that I thought can be used in a highlight. And she's made some good statements that displayed her quick wit. But does this mean that she's qualified to lead in male spaces? Well, it depends on who you're asking. So Pearl recently made a video responding to her critics. And during the video, she just so happened to bring up Rolo Tomasi, who had been credited as being one of the founding fathers of the Manosphere or the godfather of the Manosphere. Now, I'm not sure if it's due to the fact that I'm in the same generation as Mr. Tomasi or some other factor, but I was able to understand his caution that appeared to be lost on our beloved Pearl. They've come for me. They want me to look. And there was a guy named Rolo Tomasi, and Rolo Tomasi was um, a guy in the red pill space. And at one point, I really wanted him to mentor me. But he said, it's not personal, but I can't associate with your brand. And I didn't really understand what he meant at the time. But what these reaction channels will do is if you have a controversial person on your platform, they will start to insinuate that you believe what they believe. And they'll look for a video of you saying, yes, you joking with that person, you just being polite to that person and paint a narrative about you being racist, about you being sexist, about you being homophobic, whatever narrative they want to push. With Rolo, I didn't understand what he meant at the time, but now I do. The issue is if you associate with certain people and me coming into the space, I'm like, I'll talk to anyone. What's the big deal? I mean, I bring in randoms to my studio every night. Like, who cares? But the issue you get into is the reaction channels, they're, they're like vultures. Well, they'll come in and try to make you look a certain way and try to make you paint a certain way, paint it, be painted a certain way for clicks and views, even if they know damn well you're not that way. I would have to say, that's not why he didn't align with your brand, Pearl. The real reason is congruity. But Pearl's an idiot who can get Andrew Tate on her show. And Pearl's an idiot who uh, will take, uh, let's see, uh, Brittany Renner seriously. Why are you attacking Pearl? Rollo, why did you attack her? <gasps> She's, isn't she like carrying on the, uh, carrying on the, uh, the the tradition isn't she like a good rep no she's not a good representative of the red pill and i will i will i will show you in great detail why she is a hack for the same reason that i think now is a critical moment for people to pay especially if this is like if you're in the red pill and you're like consuming this content i'm hoping that you're i, I think it's key to develop critical thinking skills if a man assesses you as an idiot, it means that he thinks that you have acquired a position that you are not ready for. And only an experienced individual would recognize this. Critical thinking. 
that's what he observed was missing from your arsenal. And a lot of people who are able to amass success fairly quickly make the same mistakes that Pearl has faced as of late. They just do things because they felt like it would be a great idea, but lacking critical thinking skills, it would be like Hillary Clinton deciding to wear a two-piece bikini to debate Donald Trump because she thought the bikini was cute. Just because you think it's a good idea doesn't mean the rest of the world thinks the same. And if you don't have the critical thinking skills that come from a lived experience, it will show in your decisions as we are currently witnessing. So why would a man think that Pearl lacks critical thinking skills? I mean, isn't her ability to maintain a business some semblance of competence? Well, sure, but that's not evidence of critical thinking in the area that she appears to be lacking. Think about it. Why would you be asking Rolo to mentor you? For what purpose? Is it to find a husband? Or is it to cram your brain with knowledge so that you can become a better content creator? You see, one of the problems is that there's access without lived experience nowadays. People do a few sessions, they read a few books, and attempt to sit in the seat where previously only a lived experience qualified you. So it's not about the idea that people confuse Pearl's ideas with her guests. It's about the idea that it's evident that Pearl is a student that has acquired a level of attention that is often reserved for the most knowledgeable. It's like in the Game of Thrones when Joffrey became king. You know, he was only a boy. So his decisions were what you would expect of someone his age. And it took the older, more experienced people to balance out the chaos that came from his lack of critical thinking skills due to his lack of lived experience. And lived experience is something you cannot bypass. As much as you want to get around it, you can't. And there are a lot of online personalities who are young and have garnered some attention. So understanding the competitive nature of content creation in male spaces, there are men that know for a fact that many of these people who are getting attention do not have the lived experience in order to offer more value to men. So they are baffled as to why these people are able to grow so exponentially, which if we're honest, most of the attention that is attributed to the Pearl's growth is the entertainment factor and not the information factor. Because as far as Pearl's content goes, there's nothing that she's saying that most of the men don't already know. But it was amusing to see Pearl bursting the bubble of women who were not used to having their ideas challenged. I have a couple stats for you guys. But after a while, you reach the end of your scope and things become repetitive. Then you get Brittany Renner on and it's entertaining. Then you get Andrew Tate on with Brittany and you can clearly see that his insight is miles ahead of both Pearl and Brittany. So I could understand that people have a brand and they want to protect that brand and there are people that work for them, that get paid, and they have a vested interest in sustaining that brand, and that's great. But at some point in this type of information advice space, you're going to have to get some lived experience and become the personification of what it is that you're attempting to promulgate, lest you be viewed a grifter that is seeking to pad their pockets. I mean, Rolo Tomasi referred to Pearl as a hack. Why? Now, this may be hard to hear, but it needs to be heard. You see, men know how easily men are taken advantage of. And when a man sees women on OnlyFans exploiting men's thirst addiction, and not just OnlyFans, but in all manners of male-female interaction, if you had the ability to truly empathize with men, then you would also be able to see it from the perspective of a man who is protective of men that have yet to achieve his level of resolve. And so if, if people think that you're a surgeon and you're not one, yet you have the corner office and the coat with your name on it. You may be saying, hey, I'm not a surgeon. I never said I was a surgeon. It's not my fault that people think I'm a surgeon, but you enjoy the perks of people thinking that you're a surgeon. So you call other actual surgeons and book sessions in order to attempt to gain knowledge for the purposes of appearing to be more deserving of the position that you've managed to acquire. The conflict occurs when the ultimatum is presented. They say, look, uh, you're going to have to give it all up and get it in the mud just like the rest of us. What? What, what do you mean? You're 20-something. 
you're attempting to skip over the life experience part. And life experience doesn't come by way of asking questions to men that have lived the content that you preach. This is not just for pro, this is for women in the manosphere as well as young men in the manosphere. I've seen a lot of people taking Kevin Samuels' content and playing a few clips and then giving a mediocre perspective on it, adding nothing to the message. And if the truth be told, had it not been for the fact that they were using Kevin Samuels' content, no one would be listening to what they had to say because they're adding nothing. In fact, the more they talk, the more they're taking away from the message. And this is what I have observed coming from men. Kevin Samuel says something, and these guys respond like, yep, he's right, let's press play. Yeah, we know he's right, but why do we need you? You have no lived experience, and your drive for success outweighs your lived experience and critical thinking skills. So in order to maintain some semblance of relevance in the fast moving information spaces, people become parrots, figuring out a way to remix the messages that have already been laid in stone. So Rolo Tomasi is a man who lived the experience before he wrote the book. Kevin Samuels is a man who lived the experience before he created the channel where Pearl is seen as someone who is attempting to write the book before living the experience, while having amassed the influence of an accomplished author. I mean, you're 26, you just moved out of your parents' house. High school was less than 10 years ago. No kids, unmarried, doing Manosphere content, and you don't see why Rolo Tomasi would decline being your coach? Now, don't mistake this for being some sort of like this video. No, this is more of like an uncle having a chat with his niece or nephew and giving them the game that everyone else is afraid to due to the fear of hurting your feelings. See, what I'm saying is these are the obstacles that you will face. These are the obstacles that you will face before you have acquired the lived experience and people like Rolo Tomasi can smell the inexperience and juxtapose it next to the agenda and ultimately say, I'll pass. Now, is it the inexperience or the agenda that makes a man say, I'll pass? Or is it the fact that you're a woman and women have no place in men's spaces? Is it sexism? Uh, well, I don't know about them, you know, but I don't have a problem with valuable information that happens to be coming from the lips of a woman. What does raise my antenna is when a woman who initially disagreed with the message starts preaching the message and profiting from the content before applying the principles to herself. There's no way around that one. And this may be one of the reasons that some men are staunch believers that women should not be in the manosphere, especially when they are as young as Pearl's age. So what do you think? Should women be leaders in the manosphere? I'll tell you what I think by first asking this question. Do you think that most men are behaving in the same manner when in the presence of women as they do when women are not around? If not, why? Now, I know the answer to this, and it's no. Men do not behave the same around women as they do around men. When there's no women around. So I can understand why there are men who are leery of women lingering in the spaces of men when men who seek to help men recognize how easily desperate men can be taken advantage of. And women know that a thirsty man is her breadbasket, especially when she is constantly being validated in her DMs and in the comment section. And she knows these men's weaknesses and some of the women play to them. That's why her cleavage is the star of the show. That's why her clothes are form fitting. That's why she wears makeup because at the end of the day, she is the message and not the words that are coming out of her mouth. You know, and this is not to say that all of the women in the manosphere do this, but it is to say that there are women that understand that sex sells and men who are purely attempting to help men understand the distraction that women pose to men who are weak in the flesh. So I don't consider myself to be manosphere, although I may address certain issues that can give someone that impression. No, my intentions are to create content surrounding the pursuit of truth and to offset the impending demise of sanity and rational thought. And in my rational assessment of history, 
nothing good ever came of any woman who lingered too long in the spaces of men, unless she was both respected by them and protected by them. And outside of lust and fear, for a man will unwillingly follow a woman if he's afraid of what is protecting her, or he will follow her with lust in his heart in hopes of being chosen to bed her one day. But for a fully masculine, fully competent man to follow the leadership of a woman willingly, with no strings attached, I have observed that men only give that level of fidelity collectively and unconditionally to a woman to whom he views as though she were his own mother. So with that being said, most of the women are far too young, far too single, and far too inexperienced to qualify for that. And most of them are far too self-serving to cease and desist until qualified. But it would take critical thinking to realize that. Can't hide. You can run, but you can't